This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're uh, looking at Chapter 8 of the free lecture notes and going through re the relevant cash flows for discounted cash flow, how we arrive at the net cash flows. In the last lecture, I dealt with working capital. In this lecture, uh, tax. And as I said, almost um, every long form section C question in paper F9 um, on discounted cash flow, almost every time tax uh, is relevant. And the reason it's relevant, as I said at the end of the last lecture, if we're doing a new project and earning more from the project, uh, then the company's profits overall are going to increase and the company will pay extra tax as a result. And of course, tax is a cash flow. Uh, now, the tax you need is limited. I mean, this isn't a tax exam, but you do need a little bit of knowledge of tax. I'll explain as we go through what the rules are for F9, which if you have already taken paper F6 should be no problem at all. If you haven't taken paper F6, um, then make sure you are happy with the rules as I go through them and do learn them. Now have a look with me at example four, and I'll use this to explain how we deal with the tax, and how we get the figures. A company has a year end of 31st December each year. It's considering the purchase of a new machine on the 1st of January 2003 at a cost of 10,000. And the machine is expected to generate net operating cash flows. 5,000 during the first year, 7 during the second and 8 during the third. We're going to sell the machine at the end of the third year for 6,000. An additional working capital of 1,000 will be required at the start of the project. So, so far, um, just like what we had previous, in the previous lecture, albeit with different numbers, obviously. The extra bit, though, there's corporation or company tax payable at 30%. It's payable one year in arrears. One year late. Uh, capital allowances are available. Capital allowances... Another word is tax allowable depreciation. They're available at 25% on a reducing balance basis. And the cost of capital is 10%. So we are going to, um, as previously, set up the cash flows each year. And this time we will actually discount. Uh, we told the cost of capital is 10%. Now, before I go through this question, just one thing I must explain which affects the way we set it out. Um, in real life, again, whether you've done F6 or you haven't, the way tax is calculated, if I told you, making up a few figures before we look at um, example four in full, suppose I told you um, the net operating cash flow as I say making up figures suppose I said it was a thousand well when they calculate tax they calculate tax on the profit and the profit will actually be lower because of tax allowable depreciation which isn't a cash flow, but uh, for tax purposes, you're allowed to subtract it. We'd say less capital allowances. And again, I'm making up figures. Suppose they were 200. And that would give a taxable profit of 800. They calculate tax on the taxable profit and so if the tax is let's say 30 percent 
the tax would be 240. However, although that's fine, when we uh, remember we actually want the cash flows of our statement before uh, to be able to discount. And what are the cash flows? Well, there is an inflow of a thousand, the net operating cash flow. Uh, capital allowances is depreciation. That is not a cash flow, even though it was needed in our tax workings. Um, the only other cash flow is the tax of 240. And so the net cash flow would be 760. Now I hope that makes sense. Now that by itself isn't difficult and that's the way we'd calculate the tax, you know, in paper F6. But as you'll see when we do example 4, it can actually get a bit messy to do it that way in the exam, in F9. And what we always do in F9, which you'll see why this actually makes it easier, when we're setting up, you know, time zero, time one, time two, and so on, we say, well, the net operating cash flow is a thousand. And we say, well, forgetting the depreciation for the moment, what would the tax be on a thousand if there was no tax allowable depreciation? The tax of 30% on that would be 300. However, we already know from what we did a minute ago that the tax, we're not actually going to pay 300 at all because there is tax allowable depreciation, capital allowances. And we show separately the tax saving on the capital allowances. How much uh, did the capital allowances, the tax allowable depreciation, how much tax did it save us? Well, if the capital allowances were, what were they, 200? The actual taxable profit is 200 lower, therefore the tax will be lower at 30%. 60. It's a saving. The actual tax payable is 240. It's 300 based on the uh, net operating flows, but then the saving of 60 from capital allowances. And the end result, of course, the net, something's gone wrong with my pen here, the net cash flow is 1240. Uh, no, it isn't. How stupid of me. 1,007, it's 760, uh, the same as there. Now, you may be wondering why I do it this way. You'll see when we do this full example, example four, why it's much more efficient. You could do it that way, but it needs more workings. Uh, it's easier to go wrong, and as you'll see, it's easier to lose marks. Much more efficient is to do it this way. Work out the, uh, get the net operating cash flows and work out the tax, ignoring allowances. Separately, the tax saving on the allowances. All right. Sorry about that diversion, but now let's look at example four. Uh, get in the habit, as soon as you see one of these long form questions, uh, check how many years is the project continuing. Uh, and here, well, we send the machine at the end of the third year, so there are three years. So set up your columns, naught, one, two, three. Uh, always leave a bit of space, because when there's tax, you're quite likely, as you'll see, to need an extra year. First of all, go for our operating flows. As you saw in the pre uh, previous lecture when we did working capital, uh, quite likely you'll have to work out these figures, revenues, less costs, but here we're told the net operating flow, 5,000 in the first year, 7 in the second, 8 in the third. 
easy. Having got the net operating flow, the cash profit, work out the tax on the operating flows. Uh, here it's at 30%. So, uh, first year is 5,000, the tax on it, 30% of 5,000, 1,500. However, check the timing. I'm not, I can't remember what, um, in paper F6, what the time period is for paying tax. But in paper F9, are you told that either you'll be told tax is payable immediately, and had it been payable immediately, 30% of 5,500 at time one, or, as in this question, it's one year in arrears, you pay the tax one year late. So the tax, 30% of 5,000 is 1,500, but it'll be payable one year later at time two. Uh, similarly, uh, 7,000 at time two, tax 30% 2,100, but payable one year later, one year in arrears, time three. And finally, uh, 8,000, 30% 2,400, but it's payable one year later, time four. So again, so far nice and easy, obviously you'll be told the tax rate, this isn't a tax exam, so use whatever rate you're given. Uh, and as I say always, it's either, you're told it's either payable immediately, which would be one, two, three, or as here, one year in arrears. I hope that makes sense. And incidentally, when these questions are being marked, the long form questions, each line is marked separately. You know, depending how easy it is, it may just be half a mark, it may be one mark, it may be two marks, but each line's marked separately. And so whatever's coming later, I think those two are desperately easy marks. Sorry, I dropped my pen. Oh. OK, let's carry on. What other flows? The next thing to look at is the capital flows. And by that, I mean the initial cost of the machine. And where is it? Blah, 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 blah. Second line, it costs 10,000 at time zero. Uh, and it's going to be scrapped at the end of the uh, project, three years time. The sale proceeds, the scrap we're told, we intend to sell it for 6,000. So an inflow of 6,000 at time three. Again, another easy half mark, one mark or whatever. Next though, we need to look at the tax saving will be on the capital allowances. If you remember from that little um, illustration I gave earlier, we've calculated the tax as though there were no capital allowances. The actual tax will be lower. We'll save tax on these allowances. Now here, you always need separate workings. And watch how we do it, especially if you haven't done paper F6. It says the capital allowances are 25% per annum on a reducing balance basis. And you'll always be told the rule. You'll be told what percent and what methods used. And so let's do it. The original cost of the machine was 10,000. And so the first capital allowance computation it will be 25% of 10,000, which is 2,500. It's reducing balance depreciation. You know, again, you should be happy about that from uh, paper F3. Uh, but it brings the tax value down to 7,500. Remember, what we're after is the tax we'll save as a result of capital allowances. 
And so, if the capital allowance is 2,500, we'll save 30% of that, which is 750. <coughs> and before I go any further, when will we make that tax saving? The first capital allowance, they always calculate capital allowances at the end of the accounting period. And so we bought the machine perhaps on the 1st of January. Capital allowances would be calculated at the 31st of December, one year's time. However, because there's a one year delay in tax, although they'll calculate the allowance in one year's time, tax in a year is a year in arrears, we'll actually make the saving one year later in two years time. We'll save tax of 750 at time two. Uh, it's a tax saving appreciate, uh, so it's a cash inflow. Uh, now in fact, uh, you will see in a later chapter, there's one specific type of uh, problem where the timing can get a bit messy. I'll deal with that when we come to it. But in a standard appraisal question like this one, then basically the first tax saving, capital out saving, will be the same period as the first tax on the operating profits. So when it's a year in arrears, these are both at time two. If you were told tax was payable immediately, they would both be at time one. However, let's continue. That was the first computation. The second one, it's reducing balance. And so 25% of 7,500. Oh dear. 25% of 7,500 is 1875, uh, bringing the uh, tax value down to 5625. However, again, it's the tax saving we are after. So 30% will save tax at 562.5, uh, never work in um, sense ever, round, it doesn't matter whether you go 563 or 562, but there'll be a saving of 563 one year later, time three. Well, that's fine, and reducing balance should be no problem. Uh, you know, we carry on 25% each year. However, Whatever might happen in paper F6, I know in paper F6 you have a pool of things, but we can't cope with that here. You do 25% each year until the final year, the year of sale. Uh, here, uh, it, uh, we've got the machine for three years, so the final year is the third year, and in the last year, we do not calculate 25%. We, in the final year, we effectively get all the remaining allowances. In the final year, we simply deduct the sale proceeds. Which here are 6,000. And whatever's left, Whatever's left here is what? 375 is either what we call a balancing allowance or a balancing charge. And what it is is this. You see in total, and sorry if you've done F6, you should be aware of this, uh, but in total, we bought the machine for 10, we sold it for 6, and therefore in total we will get 4,000 allowances. Each year it's 25%. And so how many allowances have we had? Two and a half thousand. 
1875. We've had 4375. And we're only entitled to 4,000 over the life of this machine. And so the final year, depending on which way around it is, they either give you a bit more allowance or take away allowances to make sure the total's correct. Here, we've had 375 more than we're entitled to. And so we have what we call a balancing charge. And we'll have to pay tax on that 375. And so there'll be a tax payment, extra payment, or an outflow, 375 times 0 0.3, 113. Now, it'll be a year later, time four. I'll go back to the uh, cash flow table in a moment. But do see what I've done. Every year until the last is 25%. That's not hard, it takes a bit of time, that's just speed on your calculator. But the final year, you sub, uh, subtract the sale proceeds. Here, the sale proceeds are higher than the um, tax value of 5625, so there's a charge at 30% on the extra. If, on the other hand, suppose the sale proceeds had only been 5,000, Well, we've not had enough allowances. The difference would be 625, and that would be a saving. It would be a balancing allowance. Uh, if there's no scrap value, if there's no mention of a scrap value, then there isn't one, um, in which case it's zero. So if the scrap proceeds were zero, the difference is 5625. Well, that again would be a balancing allowance. We've not had enough allowances. Um, and, and so it would be another saving. So think about that to get the right way around. Here again, the proceeds were higher than the tax value. So instead of saving tax, we'll be paying extra tax again at the 30%. So let's go and finish off the thing. 113. Let me change the colour back. 113. It was a balancing charge. And so it's a cash outflow. Uh, finally, though, there is working capital. Well, I've already been through the rules on working capital with you. This is an easy one. It's a thousand required at the start, and that's it. Uh, however, because working capital is things like buying extra inventory, there is no tax effect on working capital. That's why I always leave it till the end. So the working capital, what's it say? A thousand required at the start of the project. Here, no mention of any extra during the project. Uh, we assume that we get it back, all the working capital comes back at the end of the project, which is in three years' time. Uh, there we are. So what are the net cash flows? 11,000 outflow at time zero, inflow of 5,000 at time one. At time two, 7,000 minus 1,500 plus 750, 6250, at time 3, uh, an inflow of 13163, and finally at time 4, an outflow of 2513. Uh, this one we are given the cost of capital, and so I am going to discount, what is it, at 10%. And the discount factors for one year, 0.90, oops, 0.909. Uh, for two years, 
uh, 0.826 for three years, 0.751, and finally for four years, 0.683. Well, we've, uh, we've spent enough time on the discounting on the previous chapter, and I did say this really has to be automatic and fast, let me make some space. So the present values, 11,000, uh, 5,000 times 0 0.909, 45, oops, 4545, 6250 times 0 0.826, 5163, 13163 times 0 0.751, 9885, and finally, 2513 times 0 0.683. 1716 negative. And so finally, the net present value is what? 4545 plus 5163. 9885 minus 1716 minus 11,000. It's plus six eight seven seven, uh, and of course, don't just leave it at that. Uh, it may only be half a mark, but you must state as a result: will we accept or reject? Well, here because it's positive as a surplus, we will therefore accept the project. So. There we are with tax. Um, obviously, it takes that bit more time. Um, but bear in mind what I said. The way these are marked, uh, when it's a long form question, section C, the final answer gets virtually no marks at all. The marks are for the workings, and each bit of this will be marked separately. So, for heaven's sake, set out your workings nicely so the market can see what you're doing. You know, if you have made a mistake, if it's just obviously a silly arithmetic mistake, that hardly really lose any marks at all. But you can only see that if you've shown your workings properly. But the nice thing about dealing with tax this way, you see, the operating flows here were a joke. Easy. Half a mark. It was given in the question. The tax on them. Half a mark, maybe one mark, because there was some arithmetic to do, but easy. Uh, the cost and the scrap. Again, you can all misread a question, but otherwise, straight from the question, half a mark. Tax saving on the capital allowances takes time. Uh, you know, you show your workings so that again you can still get marks if you were doing it the right way, even if something went wrong. You know, make a mis an arithmetic mistake on the first allowance or well, on the first allowance and the others are all wrong but you'll still get almost all the marks if it's clear you're doing it the right way uh, but also if something does go wrong there you're still getting the marks for the other bits you know whereas if you do it all together a mistake on one bit can make it impossible to check the other bits and remember, you only need 50% to be able to pass it. And of course, the discounting. You'll get marks for discounting, or half a mark, one mark, for discounting correctly, even if all your cash flows were wrong. You don't lose marks twice. So provided your cash flows have been discounted correctly, you'll get the marks. So although you'll see when you come to practice full ones, and in fact, the next lecture, we have nothing to bring in, which makes more complication. Um, it's hard to get everything perfectly right in an exam. But if you're sensible and if you set it out nicely, it doesn't look nice anymore, but it did when I started. Um, if you set it out nicely and they can follow your workings, I say again, it may be hard to get full marks in the middle of an exam, 
you're bound to make some mistakes, but it should be very easy to get your half marks and to pass it. Uh, one final thing, in case anybody's wondering, to do with tax, is what can happen is that the operating flow in the first year, suppose it was a lower, suppose in the first year it was only, um, what should I say, 2,000 instead of 5. Everything else was the same. It would mean the tax on the operating flows in the first year was 600, 30% of 2,000. Everything else was still the same. But what worries some people is they say, oh, 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 oh. If the cash flows are 2,000, and if the capital allowances in the first year are, if you look back, they were 2,500, it means, oh, they're making a tax loss. Well, even if you've done paper F6 and you know how to deal with losses, you cannot be expected to deal with losses in paper F9. We always assume that the company is already making lots of profit and is already paying lots of tax. And so, if this project if it happened to make a loss in the first year, it's not a real loss. It will simply reduce the existing profit, which will mean the total tax payable by the company is lower. There'll be a tax saving. You'll never have to deal with losses. Uh, and therefore, nothing I've said changes. The tax on the operating flows, 30% of the operating flow. Capital allowances, the workings as we had before. You never need in this exam to worry about losses or, for that matter, any other taxes. You know, you have examined on VAT, a sales tax, or, or any other taxes. It's just being able to deal with company tax in this sort of question. Okay. Well, we dealt with working capital, we dealt with tax. There's one last problem, which again appears in virtually every Section C long form question on investment appraisal, and that's inflation. So in the next lecture, we'll deal with inflation, and then we've got everything in this sort of question. <laughs>